from verse 7 and verse 8. And maybe verse 13. Let's go. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 and verse number 2. It says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Verse number seven. Says, <clears throat> but Isaac, we are reading seven and eight. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire, the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Ab I want you to pay attention. I'm preaching from verse 8. Then Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Let's look at 13. 13. See, then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Father, thank you for the reading of your holy word. Speak to us out of the wealth of your wisdom. Speak to us and push us into destiny. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I have a very funny title. Put your mouth where your heart is. Tell a neighbor, put your mouth where your heart is. Let's try with a different neighbor. Put your mouth where your heart is. Hallelujah. We have been doing a series on the power of a transformed mind. Now, I want to put another layer to go to the next level this morning and next Sunday. And I think that will be enough for this season. Is that okay? Hallelujah. We are reading here a story about one of the patriarchs. The man that was very close to God. The man that believed God in a way that he was able to attain righteousness before the death of Christ. Before the divine exchange at the cross. Where Jesus became sin. That we become the righteousness of God. Before that. By believing God. Abraham tapped into that dimension. The life after the cross. Before the cross. <laughs> because of faith. He was able to attain those dimensions. Somebody say I hear. So this man. Was married to a woman by the name of Sarai. He was also called Abram. Not Abraham. At the time. The Bible says as they grew up as a new couple, they tried to have children and children were not forthcoming. But God promised this man, Abraham, at a point that I will give not only a child to you, I will give you many, many, many children. He said, if you can count the sand on the seashore, that's how many children I will give you. Say, so if you dare count the stars 
of the feminine. If you can number them, then you can number your children. Meanwhile, time went on. The Bible says at a point the wife noticed that the, the incubator was dead. She was barren. And she grew old to a level where she was menopausal. No appetite, no desire. She was dry. There was nothing that could produce children about her. And the Bible says, and she came to the husband. Said, my Lord, we have this maid. We have been with her for many years. Will you mind to take a guy to make a child for us to fulfill the promise of God through her? It was suggestion of the madam. Seeing that the husband will not be able to have children. The Bible says, and the husband followed the instruction of the wife. And that's how Ishmael was born in the family. Hallelujah. We all know that as time went on, the maid started to have also an attitude. Because she could now do what the madam could not do. <laughs> hallelujah. I say hallelujah. But scripture says God came and visited Abraham and said Abraham the promise I made to you is going to come to pass through your legitimate wife Sarai. And her name shall be changed from Sarai to Sarah. She shall become a mother of many nations. At the time of the announcement Abraham and Sarah were entertaining angels. We understand by scripture that it was God himself manifested in the form of an angel. For the Bible calls them the angel of the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. At the announcement while they were having dinner, the announcements of this news, Sarah heard in the tent behind them that she was going to be pregnant. At her age, the Bible says, and Sarah laughed. And she laughed because she knew the situation in the house. She knew that daddy has her own bedroom. Mommy has her own bedroom. There is no activity in the house that can produce children. The Bible says, she even said, beside the deadness of my womb, my Lord being Old, old. This is the first record of Sarah calling Abraham Lord. And that is one of the keys that opened her womb. I will preach on that another day. Hallelujah. When she began to address Abraham a particular way, certain things, the power of God was released. I will teach on another day. Because some of you women, you, you, there's a way you are not addressing your husband. You are not provoking certain things. There are certain doors that are closed in your life just because of how you view your men. How you address your men has closed a lot of doors in your life. I'm not only talking about children. Many other things are connected to the honor you give to your husband. Somebody say you are preaching good. When she changed how she addressed him, there was a power that was released. That power, the Bible says, and she said, my Lord being old also. From that time, the power of God located her womb and touched Abraham's loins. And life began to flow. If you want to understand this deeper. The Bible says then they journeyed. And they went to a place. When they got there. A king by the name of Abimelech. Saw Sarah like a small girl. And Abraham said he is my sister. For fear of them killing him because she looked beautiful. All of a sudden, an 89-year-old received fresh
freshness when the power of God came into her life. To the level that the king was considering to make her wife. Now kings choose young beautiful damsels. Now for Sarah to enter that level and leak of competition it means she looked very pretty and beautiful and she looked very attractive and desirable. At the age of 89, Sarah and Abraham 99, fire came back into the house. The Bible says, and she conceived in the fullness of time. According to the time of life. I can imagine the joy that was in that house. Whew. I think he said, Daddy, Daddy, I'm tired. Massage my back. You know when you are experiencing something for the first time, you have heard women say certain things and you never heard the pre like if you think of Hannah and Penina, you can just imagine how, how Penina used to parade and hey my husband is, is feel the kicks, feel the kicks. And Hannah could only imagine hey, what is a kick? How does it feel? And Penina my husband feel here they are playing they are playing inside I love you forever and there was joy in that home hallelujah joy exceeding joy when you step into chapter 22 the boy is growing he can walk and God says, take Isaac, this your only son, whom you love. I want him for a sacrifice. Ah. Have we not waited all our lives? Have we not waited all our lives? For this blessing, is this not your promise? Take him. Go to the mountains of Moriah. Moriah is not a mountain. It's several mountains. Said, when you get to Moriah, I will show the one to which you must sacrifice. This shall be the same mountain that the cross of Jesus shall stand. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. I think Abraham messes me up. I really didn't want to take long here because I'm going somewhere. The Bible says, and he journeys according to the words of God. He takes asses, donkeys, we call them now. He mounts them with his servants. He takes the young boy made up his mind God has given God wants to take hey. scripture says and, and they journeyed towards Moriah your bible records when they got to the bottom of the mountains he said to the servants you and donkeys remain here there are some people you must live along the way it's a sermon for another day. There are dimensions where God will call you. Where you don't need a crowd to come with you. Because they may stop you from obeying God. When God has asked you to sacrifice. And you are within a crowd. You are around the wrong people. They may tell you why. Why? I like reading. Sometimes I read things. And I realized that, hey, this can only be God. You hear that a man of God was moved by God to marry a woman on a wheelchair in the church. Now, if you are with a crowd, you start saying, the Lord is saying, I may. they will ask you a question. What about the many able bodies in the church? Why the one on the wheelchair? So they left the servants and donkeys and the Bible says they carried the wood, they carried the fire, they carried the knife. And he 
got the hold of the hand of the boy. Remember, this is the son of promise. And they are going up the mountain that the Lord showed him. I love you forever. So as they are going up the mountain, the old man, this time is hundred and something. But he must obey God. So Isaac asked him a question. He said, Father, when we left the house, you said you are going to, you are going to worship God. You are going to make a sacrifice. I see the fire. I see the wood. I see the knife. Where is the sacrifice? The father makes a declaration that I wanted to preach out of. He speaks what he desires to see. He says God shall provide for himself a lamb. That's not what God said. God said kill your son. Sacrifice your son. But he chooses to engage a dimension I want to minister on this morning. He uses the power of creativity through declaration. He says God shall provide for himself not a son. He says a lamp. <laughs> Hallelujah. Meanwhile he continues to obey. He takes the son. He prepares the altar. He ties him. Places over him over the wood. And he takes the knife ready to obey God but he has made a declaration God shall provide for himself a son when he was about to land on the boy the Bible says there was a voice the Bible calls it the voice of the angel said Abraham Abraham do not do not kill the boy I thought you said I should come and kill the boy. Stop! The Bible says, and when he lifted his eyes, there was a ram caught up in the thicket. And he removed his son from the altar and tied him. And he took the ram, they slaughtered it, placed it on the altar, and gave sacrifice unto God. And the Bible says the name of the Lord was manifested, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide for himself. That is the time, the first time that particular dimension of God was opened to humanity. That God is a provider. Hallelujah. But what disturbs me, like I said, is verse number 8. How can Abraham speak a particular way in the face of a particular instruction. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I've come to realize when it comes to creation and to creating not only are what we imagine or think is critical but when we put our mouth where our hearts are, we speak in resonation with the images and the thoughts we have. We have amassed through the word of God, through fellowship with God, through right associations, through what was the other one? Do you come to this church? You said what? Prayer. Prayer. Why are you afraid to answer when you are in class? When you have affected your mind by being around God, koinonia, fellowship with Christ, when you have affected your mind through right associations, being with the right people that help you to create right images in your soul, Hallelujah. Amen. Through prayer, I pray that that 
Christ be formed in you through prayer. Someone said through prayer. Through prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. When you have attained a certain mind, there comes now the second gear. Someone said the second gear. Connecting what you feel and see inside with what you announce with your mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Abraham in his heart as a believer, he believed God will not have me kill my son. And I'm going to use create creative power through declaration so that a miracle of what I see can be manifested. I don't have time. I, I, I could do even deeper exposition because if you study well, the realms could not climb mountains to those heights because they cannot maneuver rocks. So that was a realm that was actually a supernatural provision of God for a realm to find itself on top of a mountain. It's not something that happens. So when he declared it, it was created. It means in the, in the realm of his imagination in the images that he had inside of his soul he declared it then it was created for him to be available to rescue his son Amen. hallelujah I say hallelujah Amen. we understand quickly from last the previous lesson proverbs chapter 23 Verse number seven. Verse number seven. Let's just do number seven quickly. I want to go somewhere. I want to go somewhere. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. My Christian life is to the dimension of the meditations of my heart. What I always ponder on is what I become. If I'm always thinking about studying the word and prayer, I'm always thinking about soul winning, I will find myself winning souls for Christ. I will find myself a prayer warrior. I will find myself as a person that is always studying the word because as he thinketh in his heart so is he cheating works the same way in marriage everyone that has had to cheat their spouse they didn't just find themselves there they thought it through so I said they thought it through they played the act in their mind before they did the act. Yo. So now we go by my church as a mistake to that in, in actual fact. You are lying. You planned this murder. It's premeditated murder. You thought it through. And because your thoughts gave birth you find yourself in the act. <laughs> Hallelujah. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Hallelujah. When you study creation in the book of Genesis, Many people don't see something there that is very critical. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created Bara. And God said, Elohim said, let there be. Many people are just imagining that God just stepped into the scene and started speaking. If you do, you do investigatory study, you actually come to realize that it's from the wealth of his thoughts. 
Creation was first inside of him. He, he thought it. He, he processed it. He knew how he wanted it to be. That's why when he released it from him through the word, this is what I want to preach, through the words of his mouth, it became manifested what he thought. In other words, what is, is not accident. <laughs> what we see that God created was exactly how he thought it. That's why he could call it because it already existed in him. And it existed in him by name. So he knew what he wanted when he wanted to call it out of him, out to outside him into manifestation. Am I speaking proper English? So he will say, let there be light. He already saw light in him. Are you following me? Yeah. Let there be fish. Fish? Yes. Let there be fish in the waters. It's something that he was pregnant with in the realm of his imagination. In the realm of his thoughts. Inside, if God had a heart in his heart. Am I preaching to somebody? So when he was full of it, he now could announce it. And when he announced what he carried, it became what he announced. We have the privilege to see before Genesis chapter 1, what God was full of through the reading and the studying of scripture. Because what he was full of, he emptied himself through the speakings. By putting his mouth to his heart, he gave birth to what was a thought. He brought it into manifestation. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. So God even himself actually followed the process I'm teaching you. If you want to see manifestations, whatever they are, you want to be married, you want to start a business, you want to go abroad, whatever dream you have, you must maintain a picture inside of you. So tell your neighbor, let, is there a picture inside you? Now when that picture consumes you, you need to put your mouth to your heart and start speaking in one accord. You see, the problem with, with humanity, Muruti, please come. Come, come, come. No, please, quickly, you are disturbing the sermon. I went in the middle of the sermon. Hallelujah. Clap for Muruti. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, the problem, you are welcome, sir. The problem with the body of Christ, we have desires. We have images inside which are good. Nobody wants to be poor. So we all wish to drive a Range Rover. Uh, amen. <laughs> okay, okay. Keep your Corolla. <laughs> but, but we all have good dreams and good desires. But what beats me with the Christians, unlike with God, is that they have a picture of the things they aspire for. But their declarations are not consistent with the image they see in the inside. There is a disconnect between the mouth and the heart. And we corrupt our miracles because, yes, I want to be healed, but I call it my cancer. Now, 
the picture I have and my declarations are not married together and I abort my miracle because I can't give birth in the, into manifestation the image I have that I speak against. You are making me work too hard. So I want to be married. Deep down in my heart, Kibola Gibudutu. I just know I need a husband. I just know that it would be a good thing to have a partner. I need a companion. Sometimes I need a companion. But when I talk to you, why don't you say, I want to be married. I shall be married. I look forward to a day. I shall. Why are you saying, Kilehitwa? Kilehitwa, Hela. Kirawari Kimoto, Hela. Totale Nyalo Kikobo, Hilekalo. The image you have inside It's a desire and a craving For the very thing now with your mouth You are speaking against it So God, Elohim Created Bara Out of the wealth of the depth of the things He had inside of him He desired a creation And he now opened his mouth And the spirit hovered upon the waters and God said, watch what, when he said it, it was not there. Yeah. Ah. We call those things that be not as though they were. The problem, we, we like discussing current affairs. We discuss current affairs. My knee is so painful. This is this is my arthritis. Actually, I'm just like my mother. This thing runs in the family. I look forward to the day I will sit on my children. We like current affairs. Tell her, stop current affairs. When he said, let there be light. Light was not there. But he saw light inside. And he spoke what he saw inside into manifestation so when his heart and his words were in sync someone say in sync creation became possible this is how miracles are created my heart and my declarations not just in church in my life they must be consistent even in the absence of evidence of manifestation your amen is very weak. Today your amen is not encouraging me. Tell neighbor the man is preaching to me. Look, look at your Bible. Ephesians chapter 20. I mean chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Wow. Wow. And we read also 21. It says now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above. Exceedingly abundantly. The description of the Bible is trying to show you there is no limit in our God. Like the things we wish for and desire, they are available to infinity. There are no boundaries. There are no limits to what God can do. Someone say, I serve a great God. But there's a valve. There's a regulator. He can only do that above all that we ask that which we can manage to know how to speak it nah. or think that which we have the ability to image it to imagine it to think it to ponder on it that which we see ourselves as is before it is God and 
answers to two things in his supernaturality and magnificence and meganess. He is going to be narrowed now and regulated by the valve of my asking and my thinking in his awesomeness. <laughs> so, Though he's able to do more exceedingly abundantly, we narrow him in his power and ability. Powerful as he is. He has made himself subject to your asking, your speaking, and to your thinking. These are twins. That's why I say you must put your mouth where your heart is. They, they must be sink. You know what happens with the blood? How many years have I stood here and looked like a fool? I said the land is coming. I said the land is coming. I said we are in court, but we will win the case. I spoke it. Did, did I have connections? Yes, I have connections with God. That's all I have. I knew no, not a man. But I knew God. I stood on the declaration, the proclamation, and the confession in the midst of the absence of the miracle. Today we are building on that land. That which we stood for, for years. That which we maintain the confession. That which we didn't have a chance to acquire is now in manifestation. And somebody had to remain consistent and be there and stay there and keep saying and keep saying and keep. When your heart and your mouth are in agreement, heaven cannot refuse you. It's a matter of time. Anyway, let's, let's read. What were we reading? 3, 20, 21. Now he who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that we ask of the according to the power. There is a power that is working in us. I taught you, it is the upper below megatos. It is the exceeding greatness of his power. It is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. That power is tabernacled inside your mortal body. That power. That power that when you throw it, nothing can stand on its way. What are you saying? So you have creative power. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal body. The Bible says this power is also regulated. How you think, how you ask. Yo. Power, supernatural power, mega power. Hallelujah. And to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I want to go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Let's do verse 34. We can read up to 37. I want to show you the simple. These are simple verses that we have left to go and look for revelation. <laughs> I'm telling you something. And sometimes we keep looking for revelation until we err into error. The Bible is very simple until you find someone to confuse you. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak? See, so when you are evil, you speak <laughs> inconsistent. Say, brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good? It's, it's like you are confusing the universe. When you are evil, you are supposed to speak bad or evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There's an umbilical cord between your heart and your mouth. And that connection must work well. There should never be a disconnect between your heart and your mouth. From the abundance of the heart. What is abundance? The things I'm loaded and full of. 
from the wealth of my imagination, from the wealth of my thoughts. That word heart is the word where we get the word cardiac. Cardiac. But when you study it properly, it actually talks about the thoughts and the feelings of men. It's not talking about your physical heart. So when the Bible says heart, it's actually talking about your mind, your soul. It's not talking about Google. Hallelujah. It, when you study it, it, it speaks about your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions. Remember when we're dealing on the emotion, on the, on the soul. So it has those attributes that we described about the soul. So it says from that dimension of your imaginary life, your feelings, your emotions, how you feel about what you feel, you then advertise the condition of your heart with your mouth. You declare what you carry. That's why you must guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Your life is connected to that which we call the heart. Your soul. Your life will follow the direction of your soul. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. This is the natural way of operation. But in the church, in the kingdom, yo, we murder that principle. We have things we wish, but we speak against I don't understand. I think it's demonic, it's satanic, it's evil. That people in trying to be humble, they sabotage their miracles. Oh, nyana. I can say pehel. Kiso nyana la samudim. Because humility has not been presented to us well. So now we have adopted a wrong concept of humility. Some of us, we have adopted stupidity for humility. Yes. And we do that in the name of Jesus. So I want to present to you, I don't know, I don't know, I'm looking for somebody here. This message is for somebody. Ask your neighbor, is he preaching to you? The way he's preaching to me. So out of the abundance, what, ask your neighbor, what is your heart full of? So if you're always thinking lies, killing, murder, you're always thinking evil. Like you are always thinking gossip. You are always then we don't need to know your heart. We just have to listen to your words. If we hang around you long, we will know who you are in your heart, according to scripture. Because your your mouth advertises the state of your heart. So it means if I can fill my heart with the promises of God, every time I open my mouth. I will be releasing the promises of God. Some people don't read Bibles, but they call themselves Christians. They don't know. So they are not full of the promises of God. They are full of human wisdom. Not the wisdom of God. Somebody say, I hear. Say, so a good man out of the treasure. That's number 35. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. But remember, God manifests in your life according to what you ask or think. So your life, as it is now, is a product. Hey, I don't want to say it. <laughs> I mean, where you are now, honestly, you are 
a manifestation of what you ask or think. I tell you, your speakings and your thoughts in the past have produced your current status. If you want to change your current status, you must change what is the treasure of your heart and what are the speakings of your mouth. That is how to change your future. You cannot want to see change when you are not changing. It's called madness. You can't expect a different outcome with the same input. Newton's laws. The object remains in its place and position until an external force is applied to it. If you don't change the force on the object, the object maintains its position. If you don't change, you don't want change something, there will not be movement. Yes. So I must change something to see movement. I want the chair to move. Maraka rabaka. Mebegada. No. I must apply force. The kingdom suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force. I must apply force for me to see a difference. But most Christians, they just pray around it. Mara. She. Kora. Sha. Kora. Pa. 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 They don't change. What created the status quo? Am I preaching a difficult message? I'm just saying change your mind and change your, spe- your, your speakings. Change your mind. Change your speakings. You will change your life. Is it not a powerful message? I tell you. I tell you. I tell you, I tell you something. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Mm. It's nice here. (laughs) It's very nice. Okay, let's let's do, I'm trying to finish. Let's do Proverbs 18, 20 and 21. Proverbs 18, 20 and 21. Your life is changing. I say your life is changing. I say your life is changing. I see you changing your mind and changing your confession. When you change your mind, you change your confession. Your life is changing. Some say my life is changing. Yes. When I change my mind and I change my confession, I have the right to declare my life is changing. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. Not from his labor. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips. If you don't know what is a mouth. He shall be filled. <clears throat> Jesus. Your life is designed by your speakings. Your stomach shall be filled or satisfied from your mouth. Not from labor. Do you know you can work so hard in life and your stomach is still not satisfied? Do I have any witnesses here? Working hard is good and I teach it very well. Well, well. I don't want laziness, even the smell of it. But my friend, if you work hard and speak wrong, you always cancel your labor with the utterances of your mouth. You can work hard for others. You work hard and your words give it away. (laughs) 
No, put it. I don't want to say things you can't see. Put it there. A man's stomach shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Okay, do the next verse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love the tongue will eat its fruit. If you can master your tongue, you can master your life. Death and life are in the power. Yo. That organ without bones in your mouth is a dangerous weapon. Yo, your tongue. Yo. The Bible says death and life, the ability to kill and the ability to make a life. The power, the power of life and death stay in your house. It stays in your car. It's always with you. It's in your mouth. It is with the fruit of your mouth. Your belly shall be full. I'm protected. <laughs> you can come back for with fuel and time. <laughs> when you have your tongue, Father, I thank you. I'm going to Francis Town. I command angels to go before me. To be my rear guard. To surround my car. In fact, I call angels of fire. I clear the road ahead of me. No accident shall happen as I travel on the road. I clear the road. I clear, I clear the road. My, my words. My words. <laughs> hey. No, we don't about that again. But responsibility. Yes. We don't want. We don't want to read Bible these days. We don't want to pray. We don't want to even prophesy ourselves. Do you know that you are the greatest prophet of your life? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You. You are dangerous. Oh. Yo. If you understand what I'm teaching you today. And every morning you wake up and say I am blessed. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed coming in. And I'm blessed going out. As I go out today. My hands are going to make money. As I go out today. I am going to walk in favor. Everybody that sees me today. They are favoring me. Oh, no. Favor is my name. Favor is my name. Oh, which prophecy do you want? Oh, I felt something right there. Someone say, I'm the prophet of my life. Say, I'm the prophet of my life. Say, I'm the prophet of my life. Life and death are in the power. Motate in the power of the tongue. God has said it. We want to amend it. No, God has said it and that settles it. So if I can master my tongue. Yo. I don't want anybody around me who speaks against what I'm speaking for. You are dangerous in my life. I'm speaking for. You are speaking against. I don't want you in my life. When I say I love my wife. And you, I hear talk. He doesn't love his wife. He's just like he doesn't. Hey. Out. Away. 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 
I'm saying I love my wife. You, you are saying I'm pretending. I say I love. I'm saying what I want to say. And I'm saying what I want to see. And I'm saying what I want to live. And I'm saying what I want to walk in. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. I never mentioned the word divorce. You, you are coming to my house. The way I saw them, they are, I think they are divorcing. Who are you? Away, away, away from my house. Life. These are simple lessons that the Christians have left. The power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. You know, Murti, there are more people hurt today, not because of anything, by percentage, even 99. Most people are hurt today because of what somebody said to them. That's how powerful words are. No, analyze your heads. He said he doesn't love me again. He said that my nose is like off. <laughs> if they never said it, you will still be happy. So words are not vowels and adjectives and words are not they are not paragraphs. Words are objects. The Bible calls them arrows. In the realm of the spirit, if you jump in the realm of the spirit, you can actually see words. They are tangible. You want me to show you words are objects? Lion. You are not seeing L-I-O-N. Are you? You are seeing one. Is it a male or a female? The lion I want you to see is a male. Now the problem you don't know the difference. <laughs> so still you are confused between. Now a male, let me describe a male so that you see me. A male is the one with big, big hair around the neck. Can you see the male? See, you are not seeing my description. You are seeing the object. Why? Words are objects. So when I decree a thing, it shall be established unto me. When I decree an object, when I decree an object, which is a thing, it shall be established unto me. It does not have to exist before I, I decree it. I must decree it and then it shall be established unto me. Remember, your soul is the partition between the realm of the spirit and the realm of the physical. If I renew my mind, then the membrane that converts things from the realm of the spirit to the natural is clean, is in accordance with the will of God. Now, when I speak it, it's able to come from the realm of the spirit to the realm of manifestation. But if I clean my mind and I speak wrong, I will not call it. Though my mind is ready to have it downloaded, I am not able to fish it because I'm not speaking it into manifestation. Hmm. So, my soul, renew my soul. You remember metamorphoso? Metamorphosis? Yes, it, it must go through a transformation of renewal. The Bible says by the word of God. The Bible says the engrafted word of God will save a soul. The one that is made one with the tissues of my soul. Engrafted word. When I stay in the word, Joshua 1 8, meditate on this word day and night and you shall have good success. When I stay there, I stay there. The oil is being removed and the water is filling my cup. Yo. But I'm ready for miracles. The next thing, ask or think. I must know now how to command that which is not and make it into being. Ah. Come on, I think one, eh? Hallelujah. Okay, let me do the last two verses. Then I close. I want to close. Someone say he's closing. 
2 Corinthians 4 13 2 Corinthians 4 13 I guess I'll go on and say you're too old to do our boy. I didn't know. Too too young, very young, very young. Too too old to do our boy. Ah, all the counselings we do is connected to talking. She said, he said, and then he said, if you don't talk right, your life will be a mess. And since we have the same spirit of faith, so these are modalities of faith. How I think is critical to my faith. By faith we understand. Hebrews 11 verse 3. That the, the things that we see were made out of the things that not seen. So my, 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 my soul is very critical in the faith. But all oh, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. I can't believe and be silent. I believed and therefore I spoke. We also faith covenant. We also must believe and therefore speak. My speakings must be consistent with my faith. What I believe God for, I must announce with my mouth. Ah, can I go to apologetic? I believe God for a church. I believe God for Range Rover. I believe God for CL class. What, what? Hey! Yes. Yeah. I'm not talking about where I come from. I'm talking about where I'm going. Yeah. 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 I believed and spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. You must train yourself without apology to speak in consistent, in sync, according to your believing. Yes. So if you believe you are a millionaire, when they say, how are you? They say, I'm fine. They say, who are you? They say, I'm a millionaire. If you believe you are blessed, you just have to believe it. How are you? I'm blessed. And highly favored. I'm blessed. And highly favored. Heavenly defended. That's a new one. Heavenly defended. I believe and speak. Believe and speak. Believe and speak. Many of us we believe for certain life, but we speak against that life. Your believing and your declaration must be aligned. Someone say you are helping me. The Bible makes us to understand, even God. I want to show you this one. I want you to, to write it. I, want, I don't want to quote it. Romans 4 verse 17. Romans 4 verse 17. Watch, watch, watch. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Now the scripture is long. It's talking about Abraham. Abraham, I'm not, I'm not interested there. In the presence of him who, whom he believed, God, God, who gives life to the dead. Now, this is the technology he uses to give life to the dead. So, say he gives life to the dead. So, he converts what is dead into life. Remember Ezekiel? Is it chapter 37? You remember it? Can these bones live? God is teaching him. A spiritual technology of making things that are dead to come alive. Say, say to this bones. Now listen. Who gives life to the dead? This is the technology. Calls those things which do not 
exist as though they did. It's, it's a technology of the kingdom. Even God brings things that are dead to life. How? By calling those things that be not as though that they were. It's like God is a liar. Kiraina wa natural. Kuri. Han teba no kolontari. We yellow bone. I didn't use a good example. Let me use a good example. He called those things that be not. Yes. So he can look at my son here and say, You are a yellow bone. God will keep saying it until yes, yes, yes. he said yellow bone. Even God calls those things that be not. So it's like how can someone manage me? Because I'm not moving my mark. Because so I'm not moving my mark. I'm not going to hear no. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, I. I am healed. Ah, it's a technology of the spirit. That is how the kingdom works. That is how we convert death into life. By not calling those things as they are, as they are. By calling those things that are not as though they were. Ah, now I won't give us a Calling those things that be not that which you can't see, I speak it as if I see it. Yes. And and now this requires discipline. It's not something you do in church. It's something that you do as a lifestyle. You train yourself. The Bible talks about the tongue of the learned. Have you have you seen that verse before? The tongue of the learned. Your tongue must be trained. It must learn. It doesn't happen natural. You must learn. You must have the tongue of the learned. You must learn. You must train your tongue to speak a particular way. Yo. I am the head. I'm not the tail. Had you reported it? And you say, Thank you, Father. The last shall be the first. Glory to God. Glory to God. The last shall be the first. You don't say, I'm stupid. Look at my report. I'm the last in class. You are affirming that position. The last. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a matter of time. I'm moving up the line. I said, I'm moving up the line. Soon and very soon, my name shall be called first. Soon and very soon, I'm walking in my million. Soon and very soon, my miracle of healing is here. Soon and very soon, I will drive the car of my dreams. Soon and very soon, I will live in the neighborhood I desire. And I will live in the house of my dreams. Soon and very soon, I will be a priest of the gospel. I will preach around the world. Soon and very soon I will be a pastor of 2,000 people. Soon and very soon say yes. That's why I want to get service. Hey, Ralo service. Change the all. Change the shock. Hallelujah. This Monday, when you get to work in your little Samausu, you must say you are a corporation. You are an organization. I see you making millions. I see hundred staff members. I see us opening branches everywhere. I duplicate you around the nation. Oh, I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. When 
you meet your children, you must lay hands in the morning and say, Father, I thank you for the doctors and engineers. Stop calling your children a fool. You must say, these are men of God, anointed of the Lord. These, the nation shall bow before them. These are people of influence. I feel God here. Shall I say, I will say it. A man's stomach will be filled through his mouth. Through his? Through what? When you look at your marriage from today, stop saying we are fighting. Stop talking divorce. Say as for me and my wife, we are going yonder. As for me and my house, we are going to transform the nation. We will be known for the love of God, for serving God, for being exemplary in our generation. Say yes! Say yes! Yes. Life, death, and in fact, there are things we must kill. Everything you don't want, you must use your tongue. Yes. <laughs> Someone say, kill it. Yes. Yeah. There are some things that are habits, that are behaviors, that are patterns. I can cut them off with my tongue. I can cut, someone say cut it off. Yes. I can kill cancer. The Bible says your master, Jesus, he came to the fig tree. He was hungry as a man. He needed something to eat. When he saw the leaves, he said there should be food here. The Bible says he was disappointed. There was no food. And the God nature came into him. I created you to produce food. Said and he cast it to the roots. And when they came that way, they said, Master, the fig tree you cast is withered. He killed it. How did he kill it? Not with an X. With his words. I say with his words. And now he says, if you have faith, as small as a mustard seed. You can see. You don't need a caterpillar. You don't need a JCB. You can say to this mountain. Be thou uprooted. Be thou lifted. And be suspended in the air. And be cast into the sea. Yeah. And it shall obey you. You can cause movements. In the realms of the spirit. You cannot. You can affect the status quo in the realm of the spirit using your words. Your words. Somebody says, Speak it. I love you. Let's rise on our feet forever. Lord, sing, sing. Oh, I love you forever. forever. Hey. I love you oh. forever. Hey. I, love I love you, you forever. Lord. Yes, let's go, let's go.
My time is up. If you are here, you don't know Jesus as your